Happy Friday, February 28th, 2025. After a brief period of mostly quiet weather, this next storm that we're going to be talking about today is going to change everything. A major storm system is developing right now that's going to affect millions, tens of millions of people across the United States, and then that's going to set the stage for a very active March, it looks like. And we're going to talk about the rest of March and the broader impacts of this storm today, but let's start with the latest updates from the Storm Prediction Center about the most dangerous part of the upcoming storm, which will be the severe weather. We've got a rare day five, 30% risk of severe weather down here in the deep south over towards the mid-Mississippi River Valley. This includes Memphis. This includes Little Rock all the way down into northern Louisiana. This is, once again, something that doesn't happen very often. This was a day six, 30% risk area yesterday, and it looks like all the way up into the day one outlook, this is going to continue to be a high-end event that we have to watch watch very closely. And of course, on the day six outlook on Wednesday, March 5th, we continue to have close to 30 million people under a 15% probability of seeing severe weather from the panhandle of Florida all the way up into southern New Jersey. So what's going on here? Why is this storm system looking like it's going to be so dangerous? Well, one of the things is every time we get new model data, it continues to uptrend. Things continue to look worse than they did before, including the wind profiles. So yes, Yesterday, we talked about wind shear and the low-level jet stream. Well, today, this continues to look more and more concerning. Tomorrow, on Tuesday afternoon and evening, we are going to have winds around 70 to 80 knots, just a couple thousand feet above our heads in Louisiana, up through the Mississippi River Valley, up into the boot hill of Missouri. And this is going to be meeting up with some Gulf moisture and a pretty significant amount of it, honestly, for early March. The big thing here is not necessarily the quality or how deep the moisture is here like we're going to have some 70s and some 60 degree dew points I think the northern extent of the severe weather area might only be dealing with upper 50 degree dew points but it's the incredible contrast that we're going to see between the moist air and the dry air this is very dry air that's going to be working into Texas and New Mexico here behind the cold front meeting up with relatively moist air for this time of year and that contrast is going to lead to the formation of severe weather likely supercells capable of producing strong tornadoes. And then, of course, the threat is going to continue to move east into places like Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia, maybe even Maryland, Delaware, and southern New Jersey as we go into the day on Wednesday. I think that the threat on Wednesday is going to be less about tornadoes and more about strong winds and hail. However, the tornado threat certainly can't be ruled out on Wednesday, and we're way too far out right now to talk about specific details like that. But a big thing to remember here is that this is very very unusual that we have such confidence in a forecast so far out. My big thing is always, don't worry about anything beyond four days. It's going to change. And that doesn't really change in this instance either. This forecast is also going to change, but there's just such a strong signal for severe weather that it's almost guaranteed that we're going to have some sort of major severe weather outbreak, just fine tuning the small details that we will have to do over the next coming days. And we're going to do that over the next coming days as we get that more high resolution data in. We're going to focus on this, but for now, let's go ahead and start talking about the more broader impacts of this storm if you don't live in the severe weather sector. Starting off today, we're going to have this clipper coming through southern Ontario into southwestern Quebec like we've been talking about. This is going to drop a fairly significant amount of snow, especially north of the Great Lakes in Canada. It's going to happen very quickly. There's going to be some intermittent blizzard conditions as this is a pretty stout low pressure system here bringing down some cold air into the northeast. This is going to bring things back near normal or below average for a lot of the Ohio Valley valley into the northeast as we go through the weekend, but it's not going to be an arctic plunge like we have dealt with so many times this winter. You can clearly see the ridge building up here after that in the uh, western and central U.S. We're going to see that warm air propagate to the east, and we're going to see our big storm system starting to cause some problems over here on the west coast in the form of rain and snow. It's going to bring some gusty winds over Arizona and Utah, maybe some snow in the higher elevations, but it really doesn't start becoming a problem per se until it gets it's past the Intermountain West, past the Rockies, and into the Great Plains. That's where things start getting a little bit more serious. That's where we have our severe weather situation starting to break out. And that's when the winds start getting stronger on the backside. You've got all of this dry air pouring in over the Rockies here into Texas. This is going to bring about some 40 to 50, maybe even 60 mile per hour wind gusts, even outside of thunderstorms. And then also you've got some potentially heavy snow on the backside here in Colorado, in Nebraska, South Dakota. As we go 
little farther into the future, that snow is going to work its way into Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and of course, northern Michigan as well. And then we're going to have just some really heavy rain likely around the uh, upper Midwest uh, down into the Ohio Valley. I think Indiana, Illinois, for example, you guys are going to be dealing with rain mostly and some gusty winds. I don't think the severe weather is going to be a big problem for you, but it could be heavy at times. I think that anybody along the Mississippi or Ohio River here needs to be concerned about flooding because we are going to have some pretty heavy rain on saturated grounds. And then we're going to see the storms move off to the east and all of the other impacts are going to move off to the east as well. We're going to see heavy rain in Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, New England. It's all going to be happening over there in the warm sector. This heavy snow at this point could be moving into Wisconsin, Upper Michigan, and then of course up into Ontario and Quebec as well. And then just look at how powerful of a storm this is. This is also something that's unusual. Uh, you know, in March, we don't typically see 985 millibar low pressure systems. This is definitely something that we see more often in the dead of winter, not in spring. And that's why this is going to be such a strong storm as well. Very heavy rains and some gusty winds will be moving through the Northeast as we go into Thursday, March 6th around 1 a.m. And then there is going to be another shot of cold air coming in behind that, bringing some scattered snow showers and some lake effect snow to upstate New York and the interior Northeast. So speaking of snow, most of it's going to fall in the higher elevations over here from the Sierras over into the Rockies, obviously. And then we're going to see a pretty stout swath of snow totals above 10 inches here in Canada, thanks to mostly to that clipper, but also the back end of our major storm system that's going to be blowing through. This is the national blend of models. So it takes a bunch of different models and, and puts them together and averages them out. It's not really picking up on a significant amount of snow on the backside of our major storm that's going to cause the severe weather. But I personally think that places like eastern Nebraska, Iowa, a lot of Wisconsin, and especially northern Michigan could see over three inches of snow from this system. It's just one of those things, I guess we've got to get a little bit closer to fine tune the forecast there. But if I'm in Iowa, Michigan, or Wisconsin, especially, I'm paying extra close attention to the snow side of this forecast because it could be somewhat of a significant snowstorm if it takes the right path. And then once again, another concern here is going to be the rain. Anywhere from two to four inches, I think, is going to be possible right along the Ohio River, down uh, towards the Mississippi River, right around the boot hill of Missouri. These are places that have very saturated soils right now. And also, the Mississippi River is high down here. So flooding is going to be a concern. But as of right now, it does look like a minor concern, not anything major like we were seeing with the last storm system that we had come through here. The reason why the soils are saturated right now. I don't think it's going to be anything like that, but it's something to keep an eye on. And then last but not least, if you don't get hit by the rain, <laughs> if you don't get hit by the snow, you're going to get hit by the winds, especially down here in New Mexico. We're going to have some, once again, 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts on Monday. And these are going to be very dry wind gusts, likely promoting a wildfire risk. Even as we go into the day on Tuesday, look here, Tuesday, March 4th at 3 p.m. when we start to see those supercells forming over here, what's fueling them is very dry air just racing down off the Rockies through the plains. And that's going to cause some significant wildfire issues, I think, especially since we have so much dry vegetation out here. And if I pull this back to today, there's going to be wildfire issues even today as a result of our clipper that's just bringing about some 20 to 30 mile per hour gusts through the Midwest. So wildfire conditions are going to be possible all around thanks to the wind that's going to be accompanying this storm system. Once again, it's a 985 millibar low. That means over here on the coast, things are going to get quite windy. That means things over here near the lakes are going to get quite windy and everybody's going to get touched by this storm system in some way across the entire country. And once again, we're going to have those winds today. That is one of the reasons why we have a red flag warning in effect for most of Iowa, Nebraska, and Missouri. And it's the reason why we have this big elevated fire risk today from the Storm Prediction Center. It goes from Texas all the way up to South Dakota. And then once those stronger winds start kicking in behind the low pressure system, when that dry air starts moving across New Mexico into Texas, we're going to see a critical fire weather condition, I think, that's going to lead to some significant wildfires. So if you live down there, make sure you are prepared and ready for that. Now, at the beginning of this video, I said that this storm is going to change everything, which of course is somewhat of just a catchy YouTube title, which is something that us people on YouTube have to do. But it's also true. I very much believe what I'm saying when I'm saying that this storm is going to completely change our weather pattern. And you can see that very clearly here on the GFS. This big trough is going to come through. It's going to lead to some buoyancy. It's going to lead to some, you know, waviness in the jet 
jet stream. It's going to make the jet stream very excited as we go through the next two weeks or so. We're going to see ridges and troughs come through over and over again. Here's our next player as we go into March 7th and March 8th. And then check it out. Man, talk about a major warm up. If this actually happens right here, we're going to have some fun in the sun on my birthday, March 9th into March 10th. And then boom, another huge trough comes through, likely producing another major severe weather outbreak. March 12th, are we done? Absolutely not. Another giant major severe weather outbreak likely as we go into the middle of March. And does it stop after that? I don't know. It's all thanks to this first trough that's coming through that's starting that spring action of exciting the jet stream. So get ready. March is going to be very active and it's going to be very stormy. But don't be scared. Be prepared. Know what you're going to do when that tornado comes through and your odds of coming out of this unscathed go up exponentially. And as always, I would like to remind you to please like this video so the algorithm pushes the vital information out to people who otherwise may not get it through other channels. A lot of people don't watch TV anymore, don't watch the news. So that's what we're here for. And then also subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on so that when we go live, it's almost certain that we're going to go live on Tuesday. You'll get that notification and you'll be ready to receive those tornado warnings and whatever else it is that comes out. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.